Hey everyone, Dogmatic71 here, and today I'm going to do a little bit of a different video than you normally see from me. It's still into the realm of tech, I guess, as I have to replace my Wi-Fi router. So I've purchased a Nighthawk X6. It's got 3.2 gigabits per second speed, which is great considering I have four people in the house that have phones, tablets, laptops, Android boxes, and all kinds of stuff all over the place that aren't hard hardwired in with the ethernet. So I'm gonna show you how to install a new Nighthawk X6. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so this is what the Netgear looks like, the X6 anyways, as you know, these things will come folded down like that, all of them when they come out of the box, and they're just the antennas. Now the front ones you can angle forward, the middle ones you can angle side to the side and the back ones you can angle this way so it gives you a, lots of range with these uh, pretty heavy duty antennas so looks kind of like an upside down spider or on its back spider or crab or something like that so it's pretty cool looking and it gives you an ethernet cable it's a cat 5e so it might not max out the 3.2 for sure. And then you get a cord. Uh, if you have a Cat 6, you might want to use a Cat 6. Now, uh, here's my old router. It was an Asus, uh, was it 1300 or 1100 or something like that? I can't remember. But what I've noticed now is it's getting past its useful life, right? Yeah, I'm having to reboot it constantly as it's not allowing our wireless stuff to connect. So I'm going to disconnect this first and then reconnect this. So what you need to do is actually unplug the ASUS and stuff like that. Shut off your um, your box, your modem there that where your actual internet comes into. Turn that off, okay? And then we'll unplug everything here, all the ethernet cables from here and unplug that. And then I'll be right back. Now, one thing I forgot to show you is the back. See, the yellow one is what comes from your modem into your X6 here. But you also have, okay, you have your power and your on off button. You have a USB 3.0. And then you have four ethernet connections. You have the LED on and off, so like all these things will light up here on the top. And you also have a USB 2.0. So you can hook up your printer to it or an external hard drive where you can let everybody else have access to it. Okay, so let's go hook it up. Okay, as you can see, I have it set up. So it shows you just three and four are on um, Wi-Fi on or off and WPS it's not there which you can press but my USBs haven't set up and I haven't set up all the internet yet so let's get to setting that up okay so now we're on my computer and you'll notice, okay, what happened before, as soon as I turned it on and plugged in the ethernet cable from my route, router to my PC, it said, popped up here and it said it noticed it had an existing router. So then it was searching. So as you see here now, it's the Network Genie. Existing router or gateways detected near your network. 
It appears that you're installing Netgear router behind your existing internet provider, Wi-Fi router, or gateway. You can choose to install your router in a different operation mode. Genie walks you. We'll just let them choose. <clears throat> okay, your current network. And then position your router gateway. So it shows you a little picture there, see? And to the TV. So Genie detected that you use a gateway for your internet connection. If you want to use all of your new router functions, Netgear recommends router mode. Genie needs to ask you a few questions. Okay, so I'll click next. You currently use, now nah, we don't really use port forwarding too much, so. For the router mode to operate correctly, you must connect all your Wi-Fi and wired devices to the Netgear router, except equipment provided by your internet service provider, such as a TV, set-top box, cordless phone. Can you disconnect all your other wired and wireless from the gateway and then connect them to the Netgear router? Yes. That Netgear recommends that you set up this new router in router mode. Router mode allows you to use all the advanced features of your Netgear router. You can always run the setup wizard again. Okay. <clears throat> Netgear recommends that you disable your existing gateways, Wi-Fi, to avoid these problems. External connection to the existing gateway instead of the new Netgear router. Interference between new Netgear router. So what I'm going to do is I did have... Uh, other things on my ethernet here so uh, I'm just gonna all I had is I haven't hooked up like my Nvidia shield is also directly connected and the ps4 is directly connected so I just make sure it's only my PC that is can you disable your existing gateways Wi-Fi we, yeah, we shouldn't be on Wi-Fi right now because there isn't one so yes Copy your current Wi-Fi settings from the existing gateway and enter them here. So what you're going to do, you're going to have your wireless na name and your wireless password, right? So you want to keep this the same as your old one. So that way is all your phones and tablets and, and laptops and stuff like that can will direct connect again when they're on the network. So this one here, my old one only had one 2.4 and one five with the new X six. I'll have two five gigahertz connections. What it does is it splits it up. So, um, the 2.4 it goes up to 600 megabits per second and each five goes up to 1300 megabits per second. So before my old Asus wasn't even close. So even if everybody's on the 2.4 because they're um, upstairs, because my router's in, in the basement, uh, you might not get a good five connection with my old router. With this one here, uh, and a lot all these stronger antennas uh, There's a good chance I can get the five throughout my house. No problem So I'll have to test that out. So I'm going to enter my pass usernames and passwords on here And then I'm gonna hit next and then I'll come back Okay, so once you've put the existing username and passwords in and then you click next it'll says you, it'll pop up and say you're connected and it shows you your username and passwords and it gives you an option to print them so if you want to keep them for your uh for your uh records if you don't have them written down already so this one here download the following router apps personal dashboard that lets you monitor control and repair your home network yep for sure ready share vault app enables automatic continuous backup of windows computer to a usb drive that's connected to your router uh, okay i'll I'll enable that just because I might put um, an external on there in the future. So I'll just do that. So I'll click next. Okay, so it's downloading, as you can see here. Install the Genie app and ready share. 
Vault app after download completes. Click the next button after you install the Genie app and ready share app to finish configuring the router. Okay, so we'll click on the Netgear Genie. Now, one thing you can do is um, in the App Store, if you're either have an uh, app, uh, Apple or an Android device, you can go to the Play Store and get the Genie. So you can remote um, from your phone if you're not at home and somebody says, hey, the internet's not working or that your the Wi-Fi is not working. You can do a reboot, I think, and you can do... Uh, Work, work on, on the, the settings, settings from your router right on your phone. So that's pretty cool. I couldn't do that on my my old one for sure. Okay, so now I am, let's see here, doing your normal rigmarole. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's going to download this, the Genie. And it doesn't look like it's going to take too long unless it's going to be stuck there for a couple of minutes. Okay, installation complete. Okay, so hit next. And then we'll just hit run so we can see what it looks like. All right, so there it is. So Wi-Fi status not connected, internet good. And then if we want, we can click on the ready share. Uh, okay, I'll just agree. Yeah. I'll do all the setups. I just want to download it. <laughs> And install it since I'm not going to hook an external onto it right away. I guess I could. I do have an external, but <clears throat> I gotta. I want to read about it first to see how much stuff it actually backs up. So here's your Ready Share stuff here. Detecting Ready Share devices. And backup net setup. See, no previous restore information. That's fine. So I'm not going to do anything since I don't have a device set uh, plugged into it yet. So let's go and, and try to fix the, the Wi-Fi here. Okay, you'll see here that there's different settings along the top that you can keep going pressing these arrows. So while we're here we're at wireless settings and then you can press these arrows here. So <clears throat> You got wireless name here. This is for your 2.4, right? And then if you change it, you can go to your five gigahertz and it'll have like, obviously my, I have my thing blocking out my username and password. And then you have a second five, right? Cause it's a tri-band, which I'm going to hide from my family so I can get used to all to myself so <laughs> for all my stuff. But uh, you can set those up. Um, if you come into here, you might have, it might already be pre-set up with a username and password. If you click modify down here, you'll be able to change the settings to whatever username and password you want. And then um, <clears throat> you go to your ready share and you can see that they have your basic ready share printing, ready share vault, ready share cloud. So it allows you to access your ready share storage device from anywhere. So if you want to put your hook up your printer, like right now my printer is hooked up through my PC and it's networked where other laptops and stuff that are Wi Fi in can access. But this would make it pretty much uh a little bit easier for everybody that's right on the network can can use the printer. Now you can have a guest access as well, where only when your guests come they can access uh, 
networks here you can create stuff for them I have it disabled I'm not sure if I pressed it. yeah see so you can have it <clears throat> uh, enable it and allow them to connect to your network if you want uh, through a guest site um, rather than just give them your your Wi-Fi password and stuff username and password now you can disable or en enable uh, your traffic meter so it shows what you're using your upload and your download you have a router update where you can do a search and I'll let you know uh, if there's any firmware for you and then you can do a reboot okay so my Wi-Fi connection function only available when your PC wireless adapt. okay I don't know why, why that's like that but you got connect Wi-Fi Wi-Fi channel and guest access is dis disabled again okay so it seems like it goes through all this stuff here so here's Wi-Fi status not enabled oh, must be through my this computer it just says that because I checked on my phone and my Wi-Fi is connected so it's pretty that's pretty much it I think that's what's kind of threw me off a little bit when it says Wi-Fi connection status not enabled but it's not enabled for my PC so the internet's good router settings you can click on here and it goes through your router router settings again right so okay that's pretty much it setting it up uh, if you got any questions about it leave it in the comment section below hit that like and subscribe button hit that bell to be notified when I post another video we'll talk to you later